Well, hello, good people. Stable Diffusion 3.5 was just released earlier today, and we're going to take a look at it. Now, I can appreciate that they use the classic woman laying on the grass as their image here, and it's a good sign that they've owned up to it and said, you know what, we could do women laying on grass. As always, everything you need is going to be in a link in the description below. And I'm not going to go through all of this stuff, but I did want to point out a couple things. What they've released today is an 8 billion parameter large model and also a distilled version, which they're calling Turbo. And the update to the media model will be released on the 29th of October, which is 2.5 billion parameters. Now, once you click on the links below, you're going to see file here, SD 3.5 large at 16.5 gigabytes. The turbo version is the same size. However, there's also an FP8 scaled version that's just under 15 gigabytes. So it's not that much smaller, but the good news is I can still run the full model on my eight gigabyte VRAM GPU. I do encourage you to download the Comfy UI workflow here. There's another one out there from Comfy that's slightly different, but it's a very basic workflow. Make sure you're on the latest version of Comfy UI. You can update it through the manager here and just hit update all, or you can go into where your Comfy UI is installed. You should have a folder called update and then double click this one, update Comfy UI dot bet. Now, when you bring in that workflow, something I want to call out, you'll probably have two other nodes. You have a double clip loader and then just a regular clip loader. I just deleted them because you're not going to use them. And the triple clip loader allows you to load your clip G and L, which is needed. You should have them already from the SDXL days, but again, links in the description below. And then you can load the T5 text encoder. I'm using the FP8 one. There really isn't too much to this workflow. We have our positive and negative prompts, our empty latent image here. With this workflow, there's a node here, model sampling SD3. By default, it's set to three. I encourage you to set it to either 2.5, to 2.75, maybe higher for certain circumstances. You're going to get better images starting at this point, okay? These nodes, conditioning set time step range, they tie into the prompts. You don't have to do anything with them currently, and you can even just close these out if you wanted to. For the sampler settings, I haven't experimented too much. By default, you should see DPM++ 2M, SGM Uniform. I have tried Euler Beta, and it seems to work pretty well. Now, originally I was doing 20 to 30 steps, but I was just finding with 20 to 25 steps, it wasn't really enough for photorealism. So I would say if you're after photorealism, try 30 to 40 step, maybe even 50. CFG anywhere from 3.5 to 7 very similar to SDXL. Then we have our VAE node here. And other than that, this is the result I got. In terms of prompt coherency, I'd say it's equal to flux. It's still early for me to say if it's better or not, but so far my initial impressions are positive in that regard. And the other thing is it's uncensored. Now, I don't know how much it's uncensored, but it gives you bobas. Now I have a few examples here between the large and turbo model. You see in this example, the differences are really small in this case. The finer details like the cables and wires are just very different, but aesthetically they look similar. Now when it comes to photorealism, the turbo model has sort of that plastic feel, whereas the large model tends to lean more towards photorealism when prompted for it. You can see it even more here. The skin looks very shiny and plastic, whereas with the large model, it looks more natural. That's not to say though, with Turbo, you may find some instances where you prefer the output. It does tend to have more of a creative feel to it. Once again, very similar to Flex Snell. And I find with the prompt coherency, it's a bit looser with Turbo. In this example, it's blatantly obvious where this was supposed to be like a female Android robot, and it picked up the prompt very well. I feel like the prompt coherency follows it sort of in a literal sense where turbo is a little more free. This is a good example of that where I was trying to do sort of like a cyborg Jimi Hendrix and it did pick up on that in the prompt. See how he looks more like an Android where here turbo version, you don't really see that. So remember earlier when I talked about this node, I'm going to show you an image where this was at three. It doesn't look too bad, but it looks overly smooth and it just has that fake look to it, right? But 
lowering that number to 2.75, we get more of a natural look. And even the turbo version here doesn't look too bad at all. You'll also find that for both models, the contrast and colors are very deep and rich. I do find with the large model, sometimes the contrast is a little heavy at times. There's not too many hands we can see here, but not great. And you're going to find with hands and feet, it's still an issue with SD3. It's definitely better than SD3 medium, but I found in a lot of cases, the hands still need a lot of work, especially when it comes to holding objects. Regarding text, it's very close to flux, if not equal to it. You do see here where the first F isn't made out too much and the A is questionable. It also understands some basic typography styles, like if you were to prompt for cursive like earlier or on the thumbnail, you see it's a more of a cursive font. Regarding turbo and text, I would say it's equal to flex now or any of the hyper or turbo models out there. You do have to generate quite a few images to generate some good text, especially if you have quite a few words. I find simple words work better, but very acceptable. Now in terms of speed for my setup with eight gigabytes of VRAM at 1024 by 1024, 25 steps with DPM++ 2M, I was getting about a minute and a half for the large model. Turbo was taking me about 14 to 16 seconds. Comfy UI will run it in low VRAM mode, so it's not too bad. But as I said earlier, 30 to 40 steps is better, maybe even 50. So obviously these times will be a bit longer. Now, as far as I know, this only works with Comfy UI in Swarms since it uses Comfy UI as a backend. But I'll definitely let you guys know once there's support for things like Forge, Invoke AI. But for now, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've already tried SD 3.5, I'd love to hear from you. And although it needs some improvements, I will say at least it's a good base model that can be fine tuned. Unlike with Flux Dev, especially with the licensing terms, there are already lores popping out that have been released and I can see the open source community training fine tunes based off SD 3.5. As always my friends until that next video I'll see you when I see you.